Welcome to the Jada and Stitches Show! We've got a really fun and beautiful tutorial for you today, but first... of you guys want to stitch it up with us every week and we want to say thank you <laughs> as a special thank you today's shawl tutorial this beautiful springtime shawl is also a free pattern on our website so if you pop over to our website link is in the description box down below you can go to the pattern workshop page scroll down until you see the familiar thumbnail and you can print off the pattern Follow along as we do this tutorial together and it's super helpful if you're still learning how to read patterns and it's a lovely one for your journal. This is a simple stitch. It repeats, it doesn't require a lot of thinking so once you get it into your head you can just set it on autopilot and off you go. And it uses variegated or self-striping yarn. So the pattern isn't so much important as showing off the beautiful color changes in a pretty ball of yarn. So that's what we're doing today. So grab your favorite multicolored ball of yarn, grab a hook, let's head to the craft table, and we will stitch up this beautiful springtime shawl together. Whee! For our pretty shawls, we are going to use some pretty variegated yarn. I got myself a Karen cake here. Now these are only 200 gram balls, so I actually got myself two because I didn't want to run out and I have a feeling I'm going to need around 300 grams for my shawl because I want it to be fairly substantial. A pair of scissors, a yarn needle, you may want a measuring tape, you may not need one, but just in case, and a five and a half millimeter hook or an I9 is the hook I'm using, but if you tend to crochet on the tight side, get a bigger one like six or six and a half millimeters so that your stitching is nice and loose and lacy. And once you've got all that, we can get going. We're going to begin with a slip knot. Then we're going to chain eight. So once you've got eight chains, we're going to make a circle. So put your hook through the first chain you made and slip stitch through it. So that gives us a nice big circle to work into. We're going to chain two. This begins row one. Your chain two is the height of a half double crochet, but it does not count in this instance. We are just getting up to the right height, but you can ignore this. It doesn't count as a stitch. We're going to work eight half double crochets into our circle. At the end of row one, you should have eight half double crochets into that small circle we made. Remember that chain two doesn't count. We're going to chain six. And turn. Now row two, row one, row two, and row three are all sort of establishing rows, so they don't really reflect the rest of the pattern. But in this case, the chain six counts as a half double crochet and a chain four space. Because two of these chains counts as a stitch, that means that this stitch here is technically accounted for. So we're going to skip the next stitch, find the third, and we're going to half double crochet into it. So you should have something that looks like this. We're going to chain eight. Big old stitchy gap here. So chain eight. Skip two stitches. Find the next one. Half double crochet into it. I sometimes find it helps to roll my stitch back around so that I can see the three loops I'm supposed to be working. <laughs> there we go. We're almost at the end. We're going to chain four more. 
and half double crochet into the last stitch. So we're skipping a stitch, we're finding the last half double crochet, we're skipping that chain two. So ignore the chain two, just skip a stitch, half double crochet into the last one. Oops, there we go. And that is the end of row two. So row two looks something like this. You've got a chain six to begin, which is actually a half double crochet and chain four. Skipped a stitch, half double crochet, and big old eight chain space here. We skipped two stitches in the middle. There's a half double crochet in the next one. Four chains, half double crochet to finish. It should look something like that. That's the end of row two. Row three kind of sets us up for the rest of the pattern. We're going to chain six to begin. So every row begins with a chain six. And from here on out, the chain six actually counts as a double crochet and a chain two space. So don't ask me why four chains equals a double crochet, but we just want everything to be a bit taller and a bit lacier for this project. So chain six at the beginning of every row. Into the first space, which is this one here, we're gonna work a shell. And for the purpose of this pattern, a shell is three double crochets. So it's double crochets from here on out. A shell is three of them. So there's a shell worked into the first space, that's three double crochet, chain two for a spacer, remember I said big and lacy. Into the big chain eight space, we're going to work a shell, so three double crochets. Chain five. And to finish off that big old space, we're going to work another shell. So three more double crochets into the same space. Chain two for a spacer. That brings us to our last space, this one here, and we're going to work a shell into it. So three more double crochets. chain two, and you're going to find the third chain. So we're going to flip it over so that we're looking at the chains. One, two, three, count up three. So this is a big chain six from the previous row. You're going to double crochet into the third chain. And that's it for row three. Okay, a little bit of explanation now. Our shells are three double crochets, when you're working shells along the side of your shawl, they will always be separated by two chains because we want a nice, big, open, lacy place to work. The chain six that begins every row counts as a double crochet, so a nice, big, long double crochet with a two chain space. And these pretend double crochets and real double crochets that begin and end every single row are anchoring double crochets. You will always have one at the end of each row. Row four is the row that we will repeat from here on out until our shawl is as long as we like. We begin with a chain six because every row begins with a chain six. Flip our work. You always identify the first space, which will be a chain two space, and work a shell into it. So three double crochets right into that first space Before we get over to the next space, we have to chain two, because that's the spacers. So chain two between every single shell. That brings us to another space. So we work a shell into it. Chain two. And that brings us to the big old corner space. Every single corner space gets the following. Shell, which is three double crochet. Chain two. 
chain 5. This sets up the space for the next round. And another shell, all into that same space. So three more double crochets. And now we're back going down the other side. So chain two for a spacer. Jump to the next space, work a shell into it, three double crochets. Chain two. There's one more space. We're going to work a shell into it. And because this is our last space, we know we have to end with a chain two, because you need to create a space for the next row, and an anchor double crochet. So you flip over your chains from the previous row, count up three, one, two, three, and double crochet your anchor double crochet to finish the row into that third chain. And you shall have something that starts to look like this we are going to build the triangle all the way out from here. So row four that we just did is what we are going to repeat indefinitely and I'm going to do one more with you. So every row begins with a chain six. You flip your work, find the first space which is always right here right at the feet of that chain six, work a shell into it, Chain two, you want to chain two between every single shell that gives you this nice big lacy look. Work a shell into the next space. In fact, you're going to work a three double crochet shell followed by a chain two into every single space all the way up to the big old corner. Chain two before you get to your corner and into your corner space every single chain five corner space gets shell chain five and shell Oops. <laughs> And then you repeat that chain two for a spacer, find the next space, work a three double crochet shell into it, all the way back to the beginning, or I should say, the end of this row. You're going to work shell, chain two, shell, chain two, shell, chain two, into every single space, all the way back to the end. Remember that that big old gap at the end is a Three chains equals double crochet and a chain two space. So always end with a shell, chain two in that last space. Count up three chains and double crochet your anchor into that third chain. And that is all you do for every single row all the way from here on out. So you can start working all of your successive rows with your pretty variegated yarn. Remember to keep your stitches nice and light and loose. Maybe put on some chill music. <laughs> you don't want to tighten up. Rework every single row exactly the same as the last one. Enjoy the process and I'll see you in a few rows. All right, this self-striping yarn looks pretty nice. I've worked 36 rows so far. I tied in a second skein of it. And I've used about half, so I have 36 rows in. It's about 98 centimeters or 38 and a half inches deep. So from the middle back all the way down to the middle point, that's how deep it is. And now I think I'm ready to put on my border. So once you've finished your last row, your shawl is as deep as you like. Make sure you work your shell chain two into that last big space. 
double crochet your anchor stitch into the top of that chain three, so count up three. Grab your hook. We're not chaining anything to begin our border row, we're just going to turn our work around, which is a, quite a thing to do once it gets big. <laughs> And all the way down the first side, we're going to work the following pattern. Into the first space, you're going to single crochet, chain three, and single crochet. This is a pico, nice cute little pico stitch into that space. Into the top of each one of your stitches, so each of your double crochets, you're just going to single crochet. When you get to the next space, work a pico, single crochet, chain three, and single crochet all into the same space. And you get something that looks like this, these cute little picots just perched along the edge of your shawl. So single crochet into every actual stitch. This would be the top of the double crochets from the previous row. Every single space gets single crochet, chain three, single crochet for pico, and I'll see you when you get to the bottom corner. Just nearing the end of my first edge with our little pico single crochet pattern, I'm going to work the last three single crochets across the top of that last shell. And that brings me up to the big chain five bottom point corner space of this shawl. We're going to work three picots into that big space. So single crochet, chain three, and single crochet, maybe pull it down a little bit, and repeat. Single crochet, chain three, single crochet, and once more into the same space. Single crochet, chain three, and single crochet. Great, and what you get is this sort of cute little three petal, subtle little flower effect at the very bottom point of your shawl. And now we're working up the other side, so you're just going to repeat the same old pattern. You're going to single crochet into the top of every single stitch, and when you get to a space, you're going to work a pico, single crochet, chain three, single crochet. And I'll see you back at the top corner. I've just worked all the way up that second side. I'm now at the chain six that began that last row. And I'm going to treat it like the chain five corner point, and I'm going to work three picots into it. Single crochet, chain three, single crochet, three times. All right, there's three picots, or that cute little flower effect in that big loop at the end of the row. And now we're going to work across the long flat side. This is the super long flat side. We're going to change up the pattern a little bit. So, here we go. Into the first place where the stitch interconnects, so you've got your anchoring stitches, your chain three, anchoring stitch, chain three, and where they intersect is a place we're going to work a stitch. So you're going to single crochet into that intersection, and into the first space, you're going to work two single crochet. Single crochet into the intersection, and into the next space, pico. So single crochet, chain three into that second space. And then we start again. Intersection gets a single crochet. The first space gets two single crochet. The next intersection gets a single crochet and the second space gets a pico. So every intersection gets a single crochet, 
The first of two spaces gets two single crochet, the second of the two spaces gets the pico, and that's your pattern. You're going to work that across the first half of this long flat side, and once we get close to the middle, I'll show you what to do when we get there. Alright, once you've worked that stitch all the way up to the middle of your shawl, and it doesn't matter if you ended on two, two single crochet or a pico, if you have an even number of rows like I do, you'll probably end on a pico. If you had an odd number, you'll end on two single crochet, doesn't matter. Once you get up to that first ring of half double crochets, you're going to single crochet in the edge of one of those half double crochet stitches, that's all the way back at row two, and into the middle loop, so that big round ring we created to start this whole thing, you're going to work a single crochet, then a pico, another single crochet, that brings you to the other side of the half double crochets of round two, so just work a single crochet into the side of one of those stitches, maybe try to pick up a piece of it, and then that brings you back to the spaces. So whatever you ended with, in my case I ended with a pico, I'm going to work a pico into that, oops, this one here, this next space. If you ended with two single crochets, then start with the two single crochets. And then you can just keep going in that pattern all the way out the other side of this long flat row. And I will see you at the beginning of the border row, so we're all the way back at that first corner. Alright, I'm getting back to the beginning and I want you to see how this looks. So I've worked my last pico into this third space from the edge. So you see this is where we ended our last row of border. We turned around and we started working our border, I should say our last row of the actual shawl and then we turned around and started working the border stitch. So that first space actually already started with a pico. So this is going to end with two more picots, which means that this first space should be single crochets. So two spaces away from that should be your last pico. And if you reversed going out of the center, it doesn't matter, like I say, what you wound up with just before you did the center work. If you reverse it going back, you'll end up with two single crochets in that second last space single crochet in the intersection, and then that brings you to the big end gap. That's a technically a double crochet with three chains or two chains, um, but you started with a pico, so you're going to end with two more picots in that stitch, or I should say that big space, and those three picots are going to mirror the other corner and the bottom corner. So you started with a pico, you're going to end with two more in that same big space and you're going to join with a slip stitch to the first single crochet you made to begin your border row. And it's going to look like that. So your little three flowerette, <laughs> if you're like me and you're using the self-striping yarn, it's going to be three or two different colors, but there's three little flowers there. And that's it for the border. Nice and simple. You can grab your yarn fasten off. There's so much color here. <laughs> then you can grab your yarn needle and weave your tail back and forth across the back of those little single crochets you made in your border row. And then you can either block your shawl if you feel it needs blocking, or you can throw it around your shoulders and just wear it. And there you go, a beautiful shawl to see you into the spring and even into the summer too. If you've got some leftover yarn like I do, I've got about half my Karen cake left, I'm going to make myself a pair of fingerless gloves to go along with my pretty little shawl, since we're not quite into the warm, warm weather yet and a little extra warmth goes a long way. So if you want to do a pair of um, gloves, 
you can try either of the tutorials that we've got up. We'll put the links in the description box down below. And this looks really, really pretty on either one of those. Again, it's a repeating stitch. So the stitch isn't so much important as the pretty self-striping color changes of a pretty ball of yarn. And that is it for this week. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We will see you again really soon on the Jade and Stitches show. Until then, be safe, be crafty, and have an awesome week. Bye.